Kerry recording this video is Thursday 19th of June 2014 here in Sydney, Australia. Well on Wednesday we had the FOMC day, market blasted up to 1950s, big kind of trending move, hope you got on board this. I actually don't want to talk about this today, I want to talk about these vertical dotted lines that I print on my charts here at the open. Um, just updated the code for this indicator and there are some kind of little uh, changes I'd like to talk about. This is all TradeStation easy language stuff so if you're kind of coding in TradeStation easy language or interested in this indicator uh, just uh, hang on we'll kind of talk about it. Big surprise to me is that this page on the website where you can download this simple little indicator is actually one of the traffic most traffic pages on the site. It's extraordinary and I get a whole heap of email inquiries saying you know how do you plot that line where can I download it and so on. Anyway, so uh, it's been available for quite some time, but it was time to update it. And the reason for updating is a couple of reasons, and I'll show you why. So uh, you've always been able to plot a little uh, line on the close on your charts, just just regular 1500 tip bar chart here. You can see if you format window style and tick this show session breaks, uh, this will show you where the close is of the day here. Uh, a couple of things to note. First of all, it's just showing the close. It's not showing the open, and I like having the open kind of marked on my charts. The other thing is it plots through these different uh, panels down below. So plots on the price panel, no problem, but it also continues through uh, these little indicator panels below. And on normal trend lines, which is what I'm using here to draw this vertical line, you cannot do that. You can't actually plot through there using the uh, traditional method of using uh, trend lines in TradeStation Easy Language. There is a workaround now, and I want to show you that. Uh, the other reason for kind of uh, talking about this is uh, the CME changed the open and the close. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. They changed the way the E-mini closes, and now there's kind of uh, a break at, at uh, 3.15. There's another break at 4.15, and then the market kind of is technically after the 4.15. It's in the uh, after hours kind of session. Um, it's a kind of a complicated, it's a bit of a mess. I, I don't know why they needed to change it, but for whatever reason they did. And so now TradeStation plots this close of the day at 4.15 Chicago time instead of really 3.15, which is what I think of as the kind of traditional close. So there's a couple of things of reasons why um, I wanted to update this code. First of all is I'd like to have these trend lines, these vertical lines um, coming through these different panels, all three panels all at the same time. And I don't want it printed at uh, 4.15, I want it printed at, at 3.15. So I think for me that's more kind of logical time to call the close. So that's what this uh, video is about and I'm going to bring up uh, the little piece of code uh, that we've uh, changed in order to do that. And you can see this is done in the editing part of TradeStation, the development environment here. Now a couple of things to say. First of all, um, if you've got one particular indicator that is on you know, a whole bunch of your charts and a lot of people have literally dozens and dozens of charts kind of saved and you want to make a change to that code you've got two choices. First of all you can uh, create a new piece of code, change your code, uh, test it in uh, a separate window and get it right and then take your old indicator off all of your charts and replace it with your new indicator. Extremely time consuming. The other way of doing it is editing straight into that existing indicator that you've got on your charts. And uh, the beauty of doing that is you can make your edits here in the editor, uh, click uh, verify for any kind of changes, and then they will ripple through all of your charts that you've got saved. So that's a real time saver. I used to use this, and it's one of the reasons why traditionally I'd never coded colors uh, for various indicators uh, within the inputs. Uh, to my indicators. I used to code them as variables because I could just change a line in the code, hit verify, and that would update that indicator and the coloring would roll through all of those charts automatically. The next time you opened up those charts, the coloring had changed to what you wanted to be. So a little bit of a technical kind of explanation why I'd want to just edit this existing code and that's why the name has not changed. I have this particular indicator on all of my charts. I want to edit it once and I don't want to kind of replace an indicator on dozens of charts. I just want to do it once in the editor and it's all kind of taken care of. So hopefully you under understand that. The second thing to say is uh, the way to do that kind of neatly is to copy your old code. You're going to screw up, you're going to make some, some incorrect edits. You might want to go back to the original version. So what I did before I started editing that, underneath my little change log, which is always a good idea just to say what I was doing at various points in time, 
I just copy paste the old code, date it, and just put it within these kind of squiggly brackets, and that kind of comments that code out. So if I ever screw up so badly, I just need to go back to the original code. I just delete what I've done, and I copy paste this old code back uh, into the into place, uh, verify, and then it's all done. It's all kind of taken care of, and I was able to do it, uh, make a change if I'd screwed it up and couldn't get it to work. Uh, I can go back to the original code. So. That's kind of uh, just a handy tip uh, and kind of editing. Not that I'm a you know software expert. I was going to say guru. I'm certainly nothing close to that. And uh, you know the way I uh, write my code is is quite p particular. I'm not professional in the way I do it. A lot of people say I should have far more comments in my code and so on. Uh, I like the way I, I code, just like the, the way I write. Uh, but it is not uh, the kind of standard way of, of people kind of coding. So just take that on board. I'm not putting this out as a perfect piece of code. It's a piece of code that works for me. Now, TradeStation a while ago, I actually don't know when, when they did this. They started implementing a whole series of drawing object classes uh, where you could control the TradeStation platform and the charting a lot more tightly than you could just with kind of the regular easy language indicator stuff. The easy language has just been sensational. It is such a great little coding language. It's far more, you know, it's simple and powerful rather than kind of being, you know, complex and powerful. Um, but they've added this extra level to it with these kind of uh, drawing object classes and a whole bunch of st things. And uh, up until you know the last couple of days, I had no interest in you know learning anything about it. But because this was kind of bothering about these vertical lines, and with this new kind of uh, drawing classes, you can actually uh, edit your code in order to create you know the effect that I'm after. I had to learn how to do it. So now the code is a little bit more complicated, um, but what I've done is I've uh, just coded up three lines uh, within the code that you can turn on and off with true-false uh, in the uh, uh, settings, the inputs. Various times, uh, I'm going to put them at the open, which is at 8.30 a.m. Chicago time, and the close at 3.15, what I view as the close. And then I always talk about the 11 a.m. window being a really important window. So I'm also going to plot a third line uh, at 11 a.m. And then let's have different colors for each of these uh, lines here. You set up these kind of drawing object classes a little bit differently. You start off your code like this, and then set up some variables and a little uh, vertical drawing vertical line code here. So I'm not going to go into this in any uh, detail. Just to say this persist equals false thing is something that is kind of controlling things intrabar. It's a little bit kind of complicated to explain. But this is a standard piece of code that will pull up a drawing object, will give you a vertical line that's plotted from top to bottom on your chart. And then, at various times, these uh, time line time one, two, and three, uh, that you can call that draw vertical line code, and it will plot a uh, vertical line of a color that you've got in your inputs, gray, red, or gray, uh, and you can change those to the kind of the uh, normal declarations for colors in uh, TradeStation Easy Language. I've set these as dashed and a weight of zero. You can change this to uh, dotted, solid. You can change the weight to one, two, three, four uh, kind of variables in here. I chose not to do that as inputs. I just chose to hard code those into the code. And there we go. That's it. It's a little bit kind of more complicated uh, in terms of coding than the um, uh, original trendline version. but what it gives me is this. So now what I've got is I've got three lines on uh, each chart on my intraday charts. I've got the open. This is yesterday's close at 3.15. Let's see if I can make that. Yep. There we go. So the bar before is at 3.13 and this bar is at uh, 3.55. So that happened at the close. Then we've got the open here at 8.30. Bang on the button. And then we've got the uh, window for reversals at 11 a.m. And that's printing at 11 a.m. So uh, the neat thing about this is now that these lines now project through uh, the panels down below here into the price bars themselves, and I can turn off this uh, kind of um, little uh, canned setting of the show session breaks on each of my charts, and I can have this instead uh, kind of put on. Obviously, in the uh, inputs to this indicator, and I'm just going to pull up this one. If I go format, the vertical line, here you go with the inputs. 
Uh, the first line is true, I can set that to false to turn that off. Time at 8.30, you can adjust that. And the color gray, just make sure you put the colors in quotes. The next line is true, 11 a.m. and a red. And the last one is true, 3.15 and gray. Uh, make sure the scaling is set to same axis as underlying data. Uh, that's a little kind of trick there if it's not kind of working for you. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Um, the code is going to be on the site. It's going to be free. I might ask for a little kind of a, a Facebook Lite or a Tweet or a, a Google Plus uh, to kind of access that code. But uh, it is free essentially. And uh, a little bit of a, a revision, a kind of a change and update to this code. Bear in mind this same piece of code where you can get uh, vertical lines kind of plotted on your chart, you can also use now. Uh, to signal things that are happening in possibly these other price pa uh, indicator panels down here. So if you wanted, uh, you could uh, be setting you know flush pan patterns. Obviously, the better momentum indicators have these patterns. Kind of, there's a version that prints on top of the price bars because you know that's how I like to see things on the price bars themselves. But let's say you've got a little bit of a setup on an indicator that you're doing. Uh, a moving average crossover, heaven but it, you're still using moving averages, but whatever it might be, kind of going on in this uh, panel down here, you can generate a vertical line then uh, that would then project that signal, if you like, over the price panel as, itself as well there. So uh, that's why I had to learn how to do this, because I'm coding up something else in terms of signals, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this, generate a signal in a panel underneath the price bars, and then just project up that signal. And rather than having a second version of that code that printed on the price bars themselves, see where those signals uh, were projected onto the price bars. But anyway, that uh, little bit of code where you can you know, call uh, a drawing, draw a, a vertical dotted line, you can use whatever um, you know, conditions in order to uh, create that vertical dotted line to print up on uh, the price bars and throughout the chart itself. So there we go, a new version of that code. I hope you appreciate it and hope you don't mind me asking for a Facebook Lite or a Tweet or a Google+.